Okay, so let's get started. So in the previous lecture and previous to that lecture, we started talking about exponential family of distributions, then talked about random sampling. We talked about uh, sample mean, sample variance, sample deviations. We talked about their properties and then started looking into sampling from normal distributions. So that led us to two special distributions called as student T distribution and student F distributions. And uh, we also discussed about some relation between various distributions, right? Like how I can obtain like uh, F distributions, reciprocal, what is the relation between T distribution, F distribution and uh, uh, this this mapping of uh, F distribution to beta distribution. So you also saw the last one in quiz. We have been talking about basically statistics which is about we said simply is uh, some function of the bunch of random variables we have observed. And as a special case we observed sample mean, sample variance and sample standard deviation. That time we discussed about one notion called unbiased. Like sample mean we called it as a estimator for the mean value of the distribution. Sample variance is an estimator for the variance of the distribution. So that time we talked about something called unbiased. So we have this like we had this if you have i samples we had by x and if all of these xi's are such that their mean value is mu okay then we said if you average them what we said is we are going to get an estimator for this mean value which we called as mu hat okay and this mu hat was a random quantity because it depends on the random variables then we said that if expectation of mu hat is equals to mu this is this estimator is mu hat is an unbiased estimator of mu and similarly we also saw a square this was an estimator for variance and we said that this is also unbiased Now we will look into another property of this estimator called consistency. Okay, but before we define that notion of consistency, we need some more definition because that consistency notion is an asymptotic notion. You notice that here this unbiasedness you can define for any n. You just take it for n equals to 10 or n equals to 15 whatever if you take n equals to 10 you are taking average of those 10 sample and its mean should be equals to mu and it happens to be mu if this xi samples are iid and if you take n equals to 15 and you take maybe I should make it n subscript n just to indicate that it depends on n samples and uh, and here I should take it mu n so here irrespective of what is the n samples you are going to use expectation of mu n hat is going to be mu and this is if it is an unbiased estimator this is true for every n but now I am going to introduce another notion called consistency which holds for n tending to infinity Okay, so for that we are going to look into 
convergence of these random variables as we have infinitely many of them okay okay our first notion of convergence is called convergence in probability did you hear about convergence in probability in IE 6 to 1 no okay we are going to say that a sequence of random variable x1 x2 convergence in probability to a random variable okay if if you look into the difference of absolute difference of random variable xn with x that being larger than epsilon that goes to 0 as n goes to infinity okay so just a contrast this what we are trying to say with a standard limit so in the what does in the in the standard limits what we talk about sequence of random variables sorry sequence of numbers tending to a this what does this mean or we simply write a goes to a a n goes to a and you know the definition of this limit right it's a standard definition but now what i'm facing with is sequence of random numbers what does this mean okay so the sequence of random numbers converging to something we need to appropriately define some notions and the first notion is what we call it as convergence in probability and I just defined what is that definition is if you look into now once you take this probability this is some number and now that sequence converging to 0 we are talking about that sequence converging to 0 okay and uh, the complement of definition is if I am going to look into less than or equals to epsilon this limit goes to 1 and this is just a complement of this and at this point I did not say that this x1 x2 there has to be iid now neither they need to be in identically distributed or independent this is just a definition if if the sequence of random variables such that this holds then we are going to call they converge in probability and the shorthand notation like the way we use it for the deterministic case like this in the stochastic case use this notion that xn goes to x with a superscript p written on the arrow mark so i will not just go into that i am just introducing this definition just to tell you what is consistency okay now let's say you people have already encountered sequence of random numbers earlier right where did you encounter sequence of random variables when you dealt with law of large numbers and central limit theorems okay so now let's see okay now suppose let's assume that my sequence are iid with a common mean mu and variance sigma and there is a type where this should have been less than infinity it can't be greater than infinity and now laugh large number said that if you take the average of these samples this value went to mu maybe I, I will not write p here at this point this is what laugh large number told me right if you take the average of this number and if you continue to take average of these numbers as n tends to infinity that value is going to mu now let's see is there any connection between this statement and the con con and the statement and the definition of convergence in probability so the claim is that this is this this is simply says that xn converges to mu in probability okay now let's see how is that 
So we, I'm now going to go and apply this definition here. Choose any epsilon positive. Now I'm interested in knowing this guy. Now these are my sequence of random variables. Xn bar minus mu I will be interested in. Their difference being greater than epsilon. I know this has to be greater than or equals to epsilon 0. That is by definition. Now can somebody tell me how did I get this upper bound? Markov inequality, right? So I obtained a Markov inequality. It's Markov or Chebyshev? This is already in a say in a way that because of this difference we have written, it's fine. You can say any of this. But actually, what I have done is basically I have take the square on both sides. Okay, if I do like this, what you are saying? If I take a square on both sides, now this is Markov, right? Now expectation of square of this absolute value is nothing but variance and by epsilon. Now when I actually got this, this is actually I could have directly written this and called it as Chebyshev inequality. Right? But I first we also derived Chebyshev equality using Markov inequality only, right? And this is exactly the way we derived Chebyshev equality from, but I'm just repeating those steps. Okay, now what is this quantity? Variance of Xn bar. We computed this, right? We computed when we calculated the sample. Var sample means variance when you comp computed. We calculated, we computed as sigma square by n. Right? Now, I am interested in n going to infinity. When n goes to infinity, this, up, this quantity vanishes and goes to 0 irrespective of what is the epsilon you choose. Okay, so now notice that this is lower bounded by 0 and now also upper bounded by 0 as n goes to infinity. So this value is converging to what? This probability is converging to? Okay, 0. By definition that means your xn bar is converging to mu. So that is why this statement. Law of large numbers if you interpret in other way, it is just or the formal way of interpreting law of large numbers is the sample mean converges to the population mean in probability. Okay? So when we said law of large number, we did not mention the notion of convergence. We just said if you take the average, it will go to some number. But that time we did not formally define what is the limiting convergence mean? Okay, but now we are just formalizing that, saying that 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 convergence was convergence in probability. So sample mean converges to the popular mean, and we already know this. Sample mean is unbiased for any n. Now I think I missed to write it here. Now whenever it so happens that if expectation of xn equals to mu and xn bar also converges to the same parameter that I am interested in here. That expectation of sample mean equals to this mu and it converges to the same value mu then I am going to call xn bar is consistent is a consistent estimator of of what mean okay what is the difference between this and this agreed let's the limiting property but is there anything more than that? 
yes this guy is that is asymptotic as n goes to infinity but is there anything more you see the expectation here and no expectation here so what is this quantity this is xn bar we denoted it as a mu mu n bar mu n hat right this is basically average of n samples and we say this is still a random quantity so if you give me one sample one sub one bunch of n samples i will get some value if you give me another bunch of n samples i will get this so let's say i'll do this okay let's say one of you give me one sample one set of samples x1 x2 x3 like this xn and i'm going to call it as set 1 and to denote that i'm superscripting them with 1 another one of you give me another set of samples and i'm going to superscript with 2 right and each one of you can give me n samples but let's stick to if i have to go and take the samples from x first guy this is like i equals to 1 to n 1 by n and he is what whatever the value he gets me let's call this 1 and similarly whatever the second guy gives me the average of the second guy's values give me let's call that okay and all this this is and this all samples are coming from the same underlying population okay now uh, is mu n hat 1 and mu n hat 2 are going to be the same not necessary but are they same in expectation yes they are same in expectation because we know that sample mean n is an unbiased estimator but suppose you give me lot of samples like you keep on getting give me many samples and uh, both of you give me lot of samples okay and now this mu n hat i you are giving me more and more samples right i am going to average and this is where it is going to converge mu and where is this mu n hat is going to converge mu even though they need not be equal but when you let n goes to infinity both the samples they are going to converge to the same mu okay so that is why like uh, if one of you just give me n tending to infinity sample i'll just average and i know this is already mu i don't care about another guy now as i have already enough samples so this is what this is why it is called consistent whether i use this this as long as n tending to infinity it is consistently giving me the same estimated value okay same value of mu okay so this is what we are going to say consistently a sample quantity is consistent if its sequence converges to a constant and in case of sample mean we know that that constant is simply the population mean and that has come from law of large numbers law of large numbers say to what constant it converges to now let's say we now just to talked about sample mean as a estimator for your population mean now let's look into sample variance and see whether this is a consistent estimator for my population variance how you are going to do that this is my definition of sample variance when you have n samples and we know that this right we actually discussed this right we know that sample variance is unbiased now again i want to check whether if i take sn bar 
and see that how much it is away from the sigma square. I want to compute this probability. So I know how to compute this probability, right? Or at least get an upper bound of that. This one is nothing but by again applying your Markov inequality, you will get this value. Now what is this quantity? This is nothing but the variance of your sample variance. So SN square your sample variance, uska variance. So by the way, did we compute variance of sample variance? Okay, if not, you can verify that even that value as n goes to infinity goes to zero. So variance of sample variance also goes to zero as n tends to infinity. Now because of that, by definition, SN square converges to sigma square in probability, right? And hence it is consistent. Okay, let's revisit this definition of consistency. So, a sample quantity is consistent if its sequence converges to a constant, whatever it is. Let's say, I am just going to say yn, if it is going to converge to constant, then you are just saying definition of consistency is a sample quantity is consistent if its sequence converges to a constant. Let's say yn is a sequence of random variable which goes to some constant value, we are calling it as consistence. Now what I am now trying to ask is whether xn bar is consistent. Does xn bar converge to a constant? Yes. How? Law of large numbers. Law of large numbers already told us that xn bar converges to the mu value. That is why it is consistent and that convergence is actually in convergence in probability. And similarly, we just said that if you are interested in xn bar, We just computed this that it also goes to a constant sigma square in probability. We just uh, computed this, right? Sn square. And that is why this sample deviation is also consistent. And similarly, you can compute that sample standard deviation is also going to be consistent. And what is that? That sample standard deviation is simply square root of your Sn bar. Okay, any question about this convergence in probability and consistency? You people are in sync with me or lost? Or anything is not consistent here? That is our notation, right? Because we said these are like estimators sample mean is an estimator and uh, we obtained it by average of n samples. So we said that was our kind of uh, informal, we are going to whenever mu is the parameter basically we are trying to estimate. So we will write it as mu n bar, mu n hat and whenever it is an average of certain number of samples we will put a bar on it. Xn bar is nothing but summation of xi 1 by n. So that is why bar. Sn square. This is same reason, right? This is also we obtain as an average of n samples, right? What was Sn square? Even it is 1 minus n. Even though there is some kind of centralization here, but it is still average of certain number of, right? I think when, okay, maybe this is why you are getting confused. Like sometimes I have put it bar and sometimes I have not put it bar. 
Lesson square also you can use. Yeah, no, no issues. I just like uh, to be consistent with uh, this x n bar. I put bar because just to indicate it's an average of certain number. S n is also S n bar R is also average of certain number quantities. That's why I put bar on this. Okay. So I think uh, we first be clear with this definition of convergence in probability. Okay. Okay. Now one more exercise. I say x n bar goes to x in probability. What this x has to be? Huh? The x n x n bar by our definition is a sample mean. That mu has to be population mean. It can't be anything. That's a constant. That x is not a random variable. It's a constant. That is why the definition here, that is why we are also calling it consistent because it is converging to a constant and that constant happens to be sample mean here. Okay. Okay. Now one more simple example I will take. I will give you Xn is uniform in the interval 0, 1. Okay, notice that open interval, it is an open interval and 0, 1 are not included. And now I define another random variable xn equals to xn square. Does yn converges to anything? If yn converges to y in probability, what that y has to be? Huh? 1 by 4. Sorry, this should not x n square, this should be x and n. Okay, I am just refining it x and n. x n, what you understand what is x n, right? x n is a uniform random variable between 0 1. Now I am defining y n to be nth power of that x n. What this will be? See, xn's are all going to be between 0, 1. Yeah, everything is between 0, 1. And if I start exponenting with n, which is tending to infinity, what will happen to that value? It's going to be 0, right? Does this y is 0 then? Yes or no? Then this y is 0. This y is uh, the limiting value is no more a random variable. It's a constant. Then the definition of this con this uh, convergence in probability applies, right? So then we should say, yeah, y n converges to 0 in probability. Okay, next. Okay, this definition will quickly go through, not spend much time, these are just definitions. What are the other notions of convergence in probability? Or what are the other notions of convergence? There are two, three other notions of convergence called almost sure convergence and convergence in distribution. Okay, you don't need to know much, but it's just better to know these definitions. We say that a sequence of random variables converges to x almost surely if probability that limit n tends to infinity xn is x with probability 1. So anyone understand what does this mean? Huh? So let us try to understand what is this. Maybe this is a compact definition, but let us say what is this means limit n tends to infinity xn equals to x equals to 1. What, what does this mean? This basically is saying that this is probability of all samples on which this xn of omega is so 
so you take a omega and at that omega that sample point you can com compute the C xn values and see whether that limit you this is like a xn omega if you fix omega xn omega is a deterministic sequence right agree or no once you pick a sample omega you just compute your xn on on that particular sample value this is like a standard limit whatever the x you have chosen if this holds then that omega lies here and if for some omega this condition does not hold then it does not belongs to this set what it is saying that if collection of all those omegas will be such that their probability is 1 then I am going to say that xn converges to x almost surely. Okay, so this is a different from almost sorry convergence in probability you can always construct random variables which convergence in probability but not in almost sure but it is the case that if it converges in almost sure it always converges in probability. So if let us say limit of xn converges to p and I have limit of xn converges to no x here and x and this is p and almost sure is written like this. So this implies this but this need not imply this. So which one of them is a stronger notion of convergence almost sure is stronger notion or almost convergence probability stronger notion almost sure right fine. The other notion is convergence in distribution. Suppose you have a sequence of distributions and it so happens that their CDF converges point wise. Okay. You take some point x and computes the CDF of all the random variables at that point x and if that value converges to the CDF of your limiting random variable x at that point x and this should happen for all continuity points of f of x. Notice that f of uh, your CDF can have jumps right only at those points it is where it is continue if this happens then we are going to call it as convergence in distribution and we are going to denote it as goes to x in distribution and now if you little bit uh, think carefully did we come across convergence in distribution before CLT so what did the CLT said normal distribution right so what CLT said is let us say if you are sequence x1 x2 have any these are IIDs and if you look into that xn bar minus mu and let us call this y n ok. Now y n converges to in what sense in distribution sense ok. Now actually what I can say is instead of this I can say y n converges to y where y is normal 0 ok. So, y n converges to y in distribution ok. I think uh, this is good enough. So, that is what the relation between them is if you have almost sure convergence you know it converges in probability and further if you know it converges in probability you can know that it converges in distribution also and when all this convergence happening to the same limiting x. Okay. So, if xn converges to x almost surely 
then xn converges to the same x in probability and that xn converges to the same x in distribution also. Okay, fine. Yeah, we don't need to go much more details than this. I think you will study all this convergence and distribution in a much more elaborate way when you take probability 2. You are doing IE621 now, right? There is a second part of that course. I don't know what is the name, label. Yeah, so if you take the next version of that, you will study all of these distributions.